heard around the world on the iHeartRadio app, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts. It's Cannabis Talk 101, the world's number one source for everything cannabis, with Blue and Joe Grande. Hello, and welcome to Cannabis Talk 101, the world's number one source for everything cannabis. My name is Blue, and alongside of me is Mr. Joe Grande. Well, thank you, Senor Christopher Wright. It's always good to be here on the show with you, and thank you guys all for listening around the world to our podcast, yes. Cannabis Talk 101. Did I say Tannabis? Tannabis. Talk. Tannabis. We're changing the name from Cannabis to Tannabis. Talk. Follow us. Follow yes, us. Yes, follow us on our new website, Cannabis Talk 101. <laughs> Don't do that. Seven silver swans swam. <laughs> I need to work on my pronunciation cannabis talk 101 check out the website you know what it is cannabis talk 101.com and we've got so many great articles on there and so many great blogs thank you guys all for contributing there call us up anytime 1-800-420-1980 and check out the ig pages at cannabis talk 101 as we are the world's number one source for everything cannabis blue is at the number one christopher Wright. hello i am at joe grande 52 and if you're looking for a trusted cannabis seed folks at a fair price you know where you need to head it's rocketseeds.com or on ig at rocket underscore seeds i love everything about them and the commercials that christians are doing and i don't know if you know this though blue christian not only who directs these amazing commercials he is now apparently doing workout videos that Pitt just showed me yeah and he's doing workout videos on ig yeah. and i just think it's amazing that Pitt showed me these you I see, see? yeah he had the white speedos and the no no he's doing like real workout videos like with bands <laughs> no, no, i see the white speedos and it, real yeah, bands. yeah so so, it, so yeah. keep doing your thing christian you're doing amazing work out there our guests on the show today this dude right here is like, for me, Blue, what was it like? It's like a flashbacky, new schooly, dope, and then you throw in a Latin. It's just, this dude, Daniel Sanchez, a.k.a. Hazard, folks, if you don't know, you need to know what I'm saying, this Hazard. Google it now. He's a rapper and the founder of Hazard Entertainment, LLC. Now, Hazard, this cat, he's from Ontario hip-hop artist best known for his countless freestyles and that's why i say old school because when i say countless freestyles we've had some dope freestyles up in here too and to me cannabis smoking blunt smoke freestyles rap it goes hand in hand it's part of the culture right sure it's like the elements of hip-hop and he, he's been on the internet heavy so that's why i say the new school style right because he wasn't on the corners maybe he was back in the day i just don't know i'm sure he was because he's, he's so dope but bottom line he pops on the internet and, of course, he has his weekly Instagram series now called 40 Ounce Fridays. And once again, the throwback to the 40 ounce. Like, we just recently talked to some OGs up here about popping 40 ounces. I brought, brought up the 1040s I drank or 840s I drink. And when he has that 40 ounce Fridays, I go, I like this. It, it relates to vibe. me. It OG style for me, right? Like, yeah. he doesn't even know how much he's affecting me personally. Where I go, this dude's dope. Where Hazard's freestyle raps and hand-selected beats are, are like sip signatures, 40 ounce, Mickey's malt liquor, and true hip hop fashion. Like everything about his shit is true hip hop and old school like that. He's been making noise throughout the years in the underground scene, which is true hip hop and making moves with the uh, Moving Difference is a big si a shot that you had, right? A big song, is that what one of them was? Yeah, we just dropped it, Move, Moving Difference, that's a single we're yeah. pushing right now. And, and then Writing on the Wall and Modern Day Slavery. Yeah. This guy is the real deal, folks. I think he's like Holyfield. The motherfucker will knock you out. You might be able to bite his ear off and still be able to get in the <laughs> ring with him. You can check him out at this year's Burning Trees Festival because yes, the shit he did with us on IG is official like a referee with a whistle. Check him out on TikTok, TikTok, you hop and everything else that you can fucking find him on. <laughs> It is at I am Hazard. I M A H A Z E R D. This guy right here is so dope. And he's so on tune with everything with his freestyle that he provides the biggest, coolest shit out there. Like what Mark Carnes foul out. Your pal Al. Your pal Al found. Because bottom line, Mark, in my eyes, found you to me. And I always think Mark has a good eye. Yeah, and a good ear, yeah, right? He's got, he's got this little that Long Beach white cat scout. that's like a scout. Like, he's got a different scout ear that I, that he's I his love. He's manager now. And, and when, Mark, hey. when Mark tells me anything, I listen, to be honest, right? So I'm like, well, I was like, okay, what is Mark talking about? What the fuck is Mark talking about? Oh, Mark said, I got this guy who does these freestyle, Joe, I think you're going to like. And I peeped your shit, and then I, I seen what you did. Don't tell it, him what you really said, though. You were like, I don't know if I like it really. At the beginning? No, I'm just kidding. No, I was like, <laughs> I was like at what point? No, at the beginning, I, I, at the beginning, I, I didn't even know like exactly what you were gonna muster. To be quite on, honest, but I was like, I just trusted in Mark. So there was nothing to be remotely even said. I just trusted it was my in Mark. Idea. To be, well, whoever's idea it was, it was so fucking 
great idea, but it wasn't executed it but was by Marks. you. It was all And Marks. they knew what you could execute, and you pulled that shit off, dog, to the highest level of execution. And the only way I like to say it is how Big Boy says it, and, and, and I just say it because Big Boy's up here in my book. Yeah, yeah of, like, of course. You know what I mean? When it's, when it's official, it's, it's, it's at Big Boy's level, right? Yeah, of course. And when I heard your shit, it was press play. Yeah. Damn, it was press thank play. you. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I it appreciate that. It didn't need that. to go back. I mean, there was a few other words that are missing, but you know what I mean? When he says it, big, yeah. But the point is, dog, your shit was press play and go. And it's hard to find cats that are press play motherfuckers. Okay. And for you, for me to see it the first time, and say this dude did that, and I'm seeing this, and we didn't have oh, to. He turned it around like Blue in two didn't days, have to change. Blue yeah. didn't say, "What do you think, Joe?" On some like, we need to change because we do. We're on the same page, like yeah. weirdly all the time, which is beautiful for our relationship. So if I say to him, "Take a look at this," and I know it's done, I, I know it's done. And, and if he says something, I'd be like, mm, "That's odd." But sometimes yeah. if he says something to me, I know there's a, is it, he, he's not for sure. Or I can tell when he's for sure, this is dope, this is done. Yeah. Yours was done. I appreciate that, big dog. For real. Thanks, first of all, thanks for having me. Well, you first of all, welcome to the show, man. There it is. Thank, yeah, thank, thank you. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Seriously, welcome. thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, welcome to the show, and then I gave you my praise in the, in the welcome, but yeah. <laughs> then, uh, and, and genuinely appreciate you guys all, the whole, the whole Cannabis Talk 101 team. Shouts out to Mark, your pal, Al, you know what I'm saying? Um, you guys have been nothing but dope to me. From, from the first time that he reached out. And shout out to my boy Thieves, you know what I'm saying? He was the one that kind of made the plug. Yeah, Thieves but, um, is hot. He, dope ass dude. Just a cool individual because he, uh, there's, I feel like, in, in, especially in like local music, you see a lot of backbiting and you see a lot of like, you know, people act like they fuck with you or people act like they're cool with you. Well, no, your pal Al you said he ghost wrote all your shit, so don't get it twisted. <laughs> he already has a secret page that says all that, but that's how his style is. So, 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 well, it's cool because it's cool that I don't write nothing down at all. So. Okay. <laughs> so, in, in all seriousness, though, like, for, for these to reach out to me, like, they say, hey, bro, uh, I got a boy who wants to talk to you. Is it cool if I shoot him your number? Yeah, hell yeah, run that shit. Yep. It was like, it was to me, it wasn't a question. And so that, like, when I, the, what I always say is the, the highest compliment of somebody's character is how people speak about you when you leave the room, yeah. right? So for me not to be in that room at all, I had no idea that conversation was even happening. And for him to speak that highly of me was pretty cool, you know? So shout out to my boy Thies, but shout out to Mark, and, and shout out to you gentlemen for having me. I really genuinely appreciate being here. Yeah, Words you know? that were spoken from my mouth behind your back uh, when I first heard that, that I compared it to. You ready for my thought process? Sure. I don't say this like, ooh, look what I did, but it took me to the thought. I remember going to Eminem's hangar when I met Dr. Dre and thinking of that vibe when I was there going, this young artist, like what you're spitting, reminds me of that young Eminem artist spitting from that Hi, My Man. Name Is album. Man, that's the vibe I took my mind to. Thank like you. that's the presence like I went to like literally when I heard that, also, that was I was rocking. I went, dude, this is where I'm mentally at now of my vibe and, and that was spirit of like my life of hip hop and dealing with that culture that was also like a selfless promotion right there too kind of when a I look was at with me. Eminem back no, in the day no, but, <laughs> you ready for this? and then, then I said to Mark I said to Mark I go dude this dude uh, reminds me of Eminem yeah man I, I appreciate that? that I mean Marshall that's, that's Mathers a, coming after you that's man. a legend you know what I mean so that's, uh, that's how I look at the way you freestyle so that. how did you get that gift to be able to just like, when did you realize you could just hear a word and then just start busting on that type of shit because that's a straight talent I think I think it was kind of like Progressively, I wanted to do it from a young age. I seen it. I was like 12 years old. I remember seeing like there was a little cipher, and I seen him do rapping, and I seen the way everybody was looking at him, and I was like, man, I want that. That's cool right there, you know. And so um, I remember kind of sitting there and like thinking, trying to think of rhymes in my room. And it took me like two years, like just sitting there trying to think of rhymes, think of rhymes. And then one day, I'm in high school, I'm at a different school now, and um, I would see these dudes ciphering every day. So I had told my boys, like, hey, will you guys go with me over here to the circle where they rap at? And the homies are like, really? I was like, yeah, come on. So I had sat there, like, thinking of this rhyme for, like, a week. And I went in there, and, like, I'm trying to, like, do this beatboxing, trying to, catch the, trying to catch the beat. And I did, and I spit the rhyme. And it, like I said, I had, like, a week to, like, think of it, you know? And so it was, I had it down cold. And, like, people started ooing and aahing and, you know, yeah, and I was like, I like that. that yeah, that you, feeling that, right that there. That feeling, you know what I mean? Yeah. I genuinely love, like, I fell in love with the, with the process of, like, I sit at home, I come up with the rhyme, I practice it, I practice it, I come to school, I did, right? And so at first it was that. I would try to come with, like, some rhymes already stacked. Uh, and then one time there was a dude that was, like, he was, he was dope. And he'd been doing it a lot longer than me. 
So I spit my rhyme, and then he spit one. It's like, okay, you go again. And I was like, shit. I got, you know? Yeah, so I, remember, I wasn't ready. And I wasn't. I wasn't ready. I, I just yeah. remember, I think I said, like, I was, like, big on DMX at the time. So I think I told this sort of suck my dick like 10 times. <laughs> like, I remember trying to rhyme. I was like, suck my dick. And at first, it was funny. People started laughing. I said it a second time. People didn't laugh as much. I said it a third time. It was like, I was like, this is what bombing like a comic is. You know, like yeah. when you hear about That's copy, it was yeah. like, fuck. So I went home and like, I was mad. And I just started like anything that I would think, I would try to turn it into a rhyme. Yeah. Like anything. Like it, it didn't matter what I was doing. Like, if I, you know. Ordering like, dinner, wanting to order lunch, whatever. Like, get up from my seat. I'm brushing my teeth. I got to take a piss. You know, get a load of it. Like, literally, like, that's what I would do in my head all day. Like, every day. Just and practice, that, practice. Just practice. And that was when I knew that, I, like, it was crazy because, like, I, I played basketball, like, as a kid growing up until, like, my freshman year. And that was, like, when my focus shifted. Like, I went from, like, wanting to play basketball every day to, like, wanting to rap like yeah. every day all the time yeah you know what i'm saying that was when and so that was when i started kind of honing it and then like when we were sitting in the back of english class and like i just grabbed the dictionary and try to like find a word that I, see if i could rhyme it you know what i mean and it was like it came it became kind of like a like a classroom party trick you yeah. know what i'm saying like the homies would gas me up and they'll be like hey hey they'll give the, they'll give the dictionary to the girls pick a word d's gonna rap it right and then i start rapping so it was just like how'd you, how'd you get the name hazard I was um, like 15 or 16. We were at, I was at a kickback, um, and I was the youngest person there, too. <laughs> I was like 15, 16 years old. We were at a kickback, and so, some of the females that the, that the dudes had invited over, they invited some dudes from another neighborhood. And so these fools came. They didn't really have any business there. And so, like, it was tense for about 10 minutes, and the little, some shit jumped off. These fools were, like, in their early 20s. I'm, like, 16. I'm 5'5". Five, five, little chubby Mexican kid. So I'm trying, I try to like run, like run in to help my, my, my older homies. And like one dude grabbed me, picked me up and threw me against the wall. Like just boom, hit, I hit the wall. I got like kind of scared. I had a 40, fun fact, I had a 40 of Mickey's up against the wall. So I go to grab it. I'm gonna hit these fools with the, with the, you know, with the, the bottle. Boy, yeah. But they was like kind of wet, like, you know, from the moisture. I went to grab it. I got scared. I dropped the bottle. But when I did that, like one of the bricks on top was loose. So I grabbed a brick off the top of the wall. I just started swinging it. Yeah. So like there goes hazard. Yeah. Early, well, early. So earlier in the night, I had been like, it was at the time it was an oddity to have like somebody that looked like me, dressed like me, kicked with a bunch of bald headed fools to be rapping. That was like that wasn't a thing. Yeah. So the homies would be like, "Hey, listen to this full rap. Listen to my homeboy rap. You know, come here." And then so I start rapping, and one of the dudes was like, "That shit sounds hazardous, homie. That shit sounds hazardous." And I I remember it kind of caught my ear. Whatever, we're kicking it. Then these fools show up. We, we end up getting down with them. And so after this fool turns around, he's a grown man. He's like 25, 26 years old, whatever. He turns and he like goes like this because he thinks he's going to get hit by somebody. It's me. Yeah. And he looks, he stops, he looks at me. There's like, I got like two fools laid out because I hit him, hit him with a fucking brick. And so he looks, he goes, fuck, you're really a hazard, huh? And it just like, it stuck after that. Yeah. I was like, yeah, I like that shit. I'm running with it. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Good. You know what I'm saying? Story, so like, dude. It was like, it was like, that was it. So every time I come, hey, fucking hazardous. Like, it was like, it, they was, that's how they would say, look, it had a little hazardous on me. And then, like, I just shortened it to hazard. Nice. Yeah, nice. I say, and there it is. Canada's yeah, Talk it. 101. We'll come back <laughs> with hazard. I might have a beatbox in me, and let's see if he can still freestyle and flow. And let you know that. about <laughs> your boy named Joe let's and your boy it. Blue. And let Blue get back on the mic. And do what he do. It's Let Cannabis me recite. Talk 101. We'll be right back after this. Keep it locked. We'll be right back with Cannabis Talk 101.
Brandon. What's up, guys? Blue right here, Cannabis Talk 101, with Big Mike from Advanced Nutrients and Lowell Farms, Mr. Mark Ainsworth. First question I want to ask you is, how did you guys come up with this beautiful uh, facility out here in Salinas, California? It was a lot of work. There was a lot of people involved, uh, a lot of support from the local government, the county. It's been a four-year journey uh, to where we are today, and we couldn't be happier to have you folks here. How many different strains are you running here? Uh, we've got about 15. Uh, there's typically about nine in production, as we call it. The team does a phenomenal job focusing on um, what's in the market today. Uh, when, when the market gets a little too saturated with one strain from a variety perspective. Hey, what's up everyone? My name is Ivan Ruiz. I'm one of the growers here at Little Farms. We're standing inside the nursery and excited to give you guys a tour. So why don't you come on down? So this is the heartbeat of our operation here. It's where we keep all of our genetics in house. And these are all of our mother plants or donor plants. So this is where we take our clones from here. So as you can see, our plants are, are healthy, they're robust, they're vigorous. So this is, a, this is the beginning of our operation here where we take our clones from. And then from this step here, after our, after our team comes and takes clones, we place our clones in our clone chamber. And they stay in there for about two weeks until they root. Once they root, they get transplanted into our five inch. They stay here for a couple of weeks and five inches, then they get, they get spread out in three gallons, which you see out here, tight three gallons, and they get spread out into a three gallon spread. So that's pretty much how we do our, uh, how we run our operation here at the farm. And uh, we keep everything, we try to maintain the canopy uh, as even as possible and making sure that staff is, uh, you know, maintaining our plants day in and day out. So you're looking at a bay, a bay of grease monkey. She's about six weeks at a flower currently. It's very important attention to detail when we have, you know, multiple varieties and their needs and making sure everybody's adhering to our protocols that we have here in the nursery. Welcome back to Cannabis Talk 101. Cali Effects is full and broad spectrum hemp extracted products contain CBD, CBG, and some 13 plus other elements and are naturally derived substances from the hemp and the plant, you guys. Check out their tinctures, waters, topicals, and vape collections. Shh, topicals. Topicals. Go feel the effects with Cali Effects. The website is calieffects.com. That's C-A-L-Y-F-X.com. Our guy on the show right here, Government name, Daniel Sanchez. You just heard the brick-hitting motherfucker Hazard right there tell the story. Hey. I mean, when you say Hazard, you better watch out for the bricks is all I'm saying. <laughs> and if you don't know, now you know where he comes from. What he did for us, folks that are listening, if you follow us on IG, you may have seen it. But if you're just listening to the podcast for the first time and you heard me give him all the praise and worship of what we heard that we thought was so dope, I want you guys to listen to this now on the podcast and take a listen to Hazard. Burning Trees Festival, the promo. Look, you can catch me every week. I be surfing beats. August 27th, and not a lot on burning trees. The only festival where you can purchase turpy greens. Turn around and burn the things down to the third degree. You never heard of me? It's Hazard with a slinky flow. If you need a ticket, get to clicking on the link below. You gotta see this show. Rose, Luda, Vendor selling paraphernalia, and the Buddha. Busta Rhymes, Mr. X to the Z, Too Short, B.I.G. Havoc on my beat, Corrupt Young Gotti, all of the alcoholics, so many dope artists, Avato can't even call it, Soldier Boy gon' crank that, while you hit a dank set, Implanted Asia and Super Nat will take it way back, to the underground bars and such, Rocket seeds blast off to the stars and such, and it's 21 plus, come and party with the big boys, big twins, big noise, Loomis making big noise, if you need a rig boy, cause all of your dad's fire for that dope hardware, holler at Ice Spire, I'm tired of the skin. Skimpy sack goofiness for big buds and big mics and vast nutrients. If you out of town, wanna know where the weed at? There's a really neat app. It's called Weed Max. Where's my G's at? No grande and blue. Cannabis Talk 101. Source for news. Speaking of news, if needed off of IG, make sure you follow that blacklist. XYZ. I was raised by OGs, so we think the same way. I'm changing the game, dog. It's where the game day. No, I don't play play when I'm hitting a vape pen. Think higher off of that dime. It's a straight 10. Hey, yo, shout out to White Angel Farms. You know they have it set in earth grown. Hit up your pal Al for that VIP guest list. August 27th, Adelanto, California. Burning trees, baby. Yeah. I go by the name of Hazard to the fucking mic. Live from Room ZLA. I'm out. Man. That shit's colder than a hooker's heart. I mean, I, I appreciate it. I That's appreciate it. That is just. 
I like like I was you know I, it when when Mark hit me up about it gave me a checklist and I wanted to make sure I hit every single point but I didn't want it to like sound corny so I tried not to overthink it I know you were saying I turned it around quick like he gave me the you know he gave me the the, the, whole, the whole rundown, the yeah. whole outline. Like could he wrote, you shout it. These he wrote it for out? you, right? Could you shout these people out? <laughs> and then, and then he is like, "Yo, I think this you would sound dope on this one beat." I'm like, "All right, cool, let's do it, let's run it." So, oh, so Mark so fully produced the, it like that. No, I, no, that's a co-production in my look, book. I gotta, oh, I gotta, no, really, yeah. I gotta shout him. I gotta get a man his credit. Yeah. He was like, "Yo, what about this beat?" And I'm like, "Man, it's, it's your promo. That's more, you know, yeah, whatever, that's you, whatever you need." You know. Yeah. So, so he has shot me this a a B choice, and I'm sitting there listening. I'm like, he might know something, so let's do it. So I just like my thing was I try not to overthink it. You yeah. know what I mean? That was like that was my main like cut the mic on let's go. You know, you know what what's mean? crazy is is he had he had mentioned that um, Mark your pa oh, he he mentioned that he had shot you that beat a long time ago, and he thought you would be dope on it. I think prior to even this. Yeah, he. So it's crazy because and this is the, with the whole like recent success of you know, you were talking about Forty Ounce Fridays. People really kind of started tuning in maybe like seven eight months ago. We've been doing it for over three years now. And so with that, like last seven, eight months, my inboxes, I got like 700 pending requests. I, I try to keep like at the very top, I try to look, you know what I mean? But it's, it's like, I don't have my DMs closed for people like Mark to reach out to me. But the, the, the issue is like, you get like a lot of fans and I try to respond to as many of them as I can. Yeah. But then sometimes like people don't have like a, like a personal boundary oh, my, yeah. and it, it'll get weird. Like in the DM and I'm like, bro, you a grown man right now. Yeah. And so yeah. am I like. You're, you're being kind of fucking weird, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I don't ever want to be rude or disrespectful to anybody. So I, what I started doing was just kind of like skimming the top of my requests and make sure I kind of clear them. Sure. Uh, you know what I mean? But People yeah, he are was funny one of like the, that though in real life. Like it, for real, that's like real all day. It's 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 weird because like why would why the fuck would you like I don't know like the one the one when I was like all right this is officially like I had a dude send me his whole life story and then so can you cash at me twenty dollars. <laughs> And like, I was like, you're like, nah, bro. I'm like, you're really like, yeah. it was like a whole you story. Hear what we see, bro. I don't even like a lot of us. Like, we, no, you're supposed to pay me to do this. I'm just, it was like, <laughs> it was why. So like, I don't know. But that being said, it, he had told me, yo, I, I shot. And I felt horrible because he's like, yeah, I shot you this beat a while ago. And I go into the DM. And it's like, right there. You would sound dope on this. Damn. <laughs> sure enough. He called this shot like about four or five months ago. So, you know, shouts out to Mark. No, right Mark now. has a good ear. He's always had, I, I agree and feel like, you know, I, I like, I've he actually really sent does, him some man. stuff like, hey, Mark. Matter of fact, he's never even responded to the fucking things I've sent him. Come to think of it, and I've sent him some shit on what you, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've sent him some shit a while, like months ago. Come to think of it, I've sent him something and I've never got an official response from him on something like I really wanted to know what he thought about so it. So I was just, I was just. Your karma for him or something, you know what I mean? That's like, weird. That, no, I but I see him every fucking day. What do you mean? I know. I mean, I see the guy every day. It's not like a matter of. He still don't just, respond. Yeah, and it's not even. Ma- I just forgot about he that just goes, story. <laughs> but you know, yeah, exactly. Like an owl. I even bought him a little wooden owl that he probably lost and threw away. Is it in the shotgun? Is it in the car? <laughs> I literally was at a store and I seen this he puts wooden a seat owl belt on it and car pulls. And I had to buy it for him. It was a wooden carved owl. And I go, dude, that just it spoke hard. your name up, you know? Yeah. That's hard. At a random antique shop. So, dude, so what's the story? You come from Ontario, you didn't get signed well, yet. Quick, you signed. Real you... quick, you went to jail. Was that it? I heard I heard you were in prison, huh? Real, or something yeah. like that. Yeah, um, yeah. So I was like incarcerated from the time I was 18 to 24. I, and I was out for like a couple months. I was on bail. I caught like a bunch of charges. I was a, I was a young dumbass, and so from the time I was like nineteen to twenty four, I was in prison. Um, so you guys are talking about like a jet or whatever, private jet. Yeah. My first time on a plane was Con Air. In jet. Our, yeah. They were transporting. They you. were transporting me from. So they had due to overcrowding in California, they had sent us out of state to like our private prisons. Yeah. Uh, I was one. In, I was in one in Arizona, and then they needed to transport us to Oklahoma. Ah. And so, did um, they parole you in Oklahoma? Nah, they they have to bring you back to California. Gotcha. So so um, they flew us out to Oklahoma, and I remember like, I jumped on the plane, and I, I think I said something like, and I remember like all the homies were mad at me too, cause I said, hey, for what you know, I've never been on a plane before, and my favorite movie's La Bamba, and the whole fucking plane Richie. just turned and looked at me. They turned and looked at me. Motherfucker. They just looked at me like this, and I was uh, like, and guess what my middle name is? 
Richie. 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 <laughs> <laughs> hey, I had like I had like five homies order to fight. They were looking at me like, for real, fool. Yeah, like you really want to do this. You're right a now? fucking dick, yeah. fool. Why you, you know? gotta put that karma on and it? And I had dog. never, I had never like I'd never been on a plane, but I remember like they fed us kind of cool, which is a big deal in Jeff. Anytime you get decent food, we had like Subway sandwiches. We were geeked about that. And the in-flight movie was um The Tourist with yeah, Johnny too. Depp and Angelina Jolie. Well, that was cool. Yeah, yeah. You got to really get you a nice. What did you get hit nice. for? Um, for my, my term for five years. Yeah. Uh, robbery, conspiracy, could have made a crime, assault on a peace officer, and um, and then I had a, uh, another suspended sentence for a carjacking. So. Oh, so it's a fun childhood shit. I was a real dumbass. Yeah. 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 You know so, I mean? so, yeah. so how, how's life now? Life is. Life is good, man. You doing um, better? Are you doing better? Are you still yeah, being in Yeah, a thousand percent. <laughs> no, a thousand percent. So, like, um, I, I paroled in 2012, actually, and um, my focus was, like, trying to... I have, a, I have a, a, a daughter, so my focus was trying to be there for my daughter and then and make music. So, like, you were talking about, like, a modern-day slavery, uh, writing on the wall. That Those were all songs, like, I did in my run from, like, 2012 to, like, 2016. Um, I was fighting for custody of my daughter, and... Um, I was dealing with a lot in court. I had done a song called Start a Riot. I was very careful about my music when I first came home. I wanted to talk my shit. Like, I'm fresh out, look at me. But I was careful because I was trying to get custody of my daughter. So I did a song called Start a Riot, just as an example. And they told me that I had my daughter at a, at a video shoot where I was promoting. Because the song's kind of like revolutionary, kind of, you know, uh, uh, anti-police uh, brutality song. They told me I had my daughter at a... Because she was there on set, but, like, I had her kind of, like, in a, in a back area. It was my day. You know what I'm saying? Right. So I had her, but I had her kind of, like, set apart with her own little babysitter for the day or whatever. At work, though. You're at work. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And they told me a I had her at shoot. a... They told me I had her at a video shoot. First, they tried to say I had a video shoot with, like, naked women. And I was like, no, I didn't. Then here's the video. So then they said, oh, so you had her at a, a video shoot where you were advocating a violence against police officers. And I was like, what? That's what we're doing? Yeah. So at a certain point, it became like I'm trying to make music because it's the one way that I know, like, legally, I feel like I'm good enough to make a difference in my child's life. But if they're going to use that shit against me, like, what's the point? What a fucking sure. double-edged you know sword. Yeah. So, so yeah. I had kind of pulled back and, like, you know, I had a decent day job, whatever. And I had pulled back from making music. And then when I got custody of her, like, I kind of doubled down. You know, I, I, I talked to my lady. I, I talked to my daughter about it. Like, look, I probably got one more push at this. You know, I want, I would like to try to. What do you guys think? You know, and they were just like, whatever. Because I had been trying to do it for so long. It's probably to them they were like, yeah, let, give him, up, yeah. let him keep doing his hobby. You know, no, no, not even give up. Just like, let him keep they doing gave his, up on you. his hobby <laughs> thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so... I just, I kept yeah, pushing. They're I kept like, pushing he's got it. a mic in the back. Yeah. And he's you got know? this and that. He's fine. Let him keep doing his thing. Fuck it. He might buy a new uh, couple of little things here and right. there. Right. And so I just kind of kept pushing at it. And then the idea for 40 Ounce Fridays came about. Uh, my boy Urban from from All Angles, uh, he had uh, he had shot me some beats. Like, bro, you can't quit music. I got some dope. Yeah, here, you would sound dope on this. So we started recording music. And we were trying to figure out how we could promote the, the music. Because at that time, I was relatively, like, unknown, you know? So... I was like, hey, people like when I get drunk and talk shit. So, because I had had a, a video, it went crazy on TikTok for me some years later, but I had a video called Buzz Bars. It was me in my, in, in my boy's living room. And I thought at that time I was like quitting music. So I wanted to get these bars off and record them and put them up. So I told my boy, let me rap, let me rap. It was 420 actually. Yeah. And these fools are like rip clearing big ass bonds. They got the whole apartment cloudy. I'm like, I'm getting, I'm catching a contact. And I'm like, I, even, I wasn't even smoking because I was drinking, I was trying to chill. Man, I got, like, really, really faded. I, I'm rapping, like, like I don't even remember doing it. The next day, I asked my lady, like, hey, was I rapping last night? She's like, yeah, they were recording you. Like, look at your phone. So then I checked my phone, and I was like, holy shit, this looks fucking dope. I put it on my Facebook. It did, like, I don't know, maybe, like, 15,000 views on my Facebook. Like, nice. on a personal Facebook page. Yeah, now, right, right, right. Exactly. Not you know, YouTube, yeah. Yeah. And so people, I was like, damn, this, people really like that. So, you know, fast forward, when we were talking about trying to do something like, a, like a, to promote the album, I was like, we had, you know, this, this group of songs we wanted to put out. I was like, hey, what if we did something called 40 Ounce Fridays? You know, where I kill a 40, I pick a classic rap beat, I rap over it. My boy's like, that shit sounds dope. Like, let's go. So, but do you really kill the forty every week? Every single week, as you should. I got. I have, you know what I mean? Every I week, have, a forty my, to the my, head just my sounds wife, about right. My wife could attest to this. I got a hundred and seventy-one empty forty bottles. Not all at my pad, but like my boys at my boys' studio. Um, he's got like fifty some. 
at the latest location we've been at. You I probably got another. Him up and, and, yeah, and, I, and, and now you're gonna sign them and sell them when you get when you get popping. That's the plan. Yeah, that's the plan. You know what I'm I that's love the plan. that idea. So, Did so, I just throw that out there? Or no, you, you had something no, like that. that going? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I've got like I've got a lot of them. Like the first ones, they're all signed and dated. Yeah. But like some of these newer ones is like I killed a 40 and you know put it no, down. No, dog, keep signing them and dating. Them. But, yeah, but it's crazy because it's, it's crazy because um, we had um, uh, one of my boys that uses the same studio that I record 40 on Fridays out of now. Um, he goes and he's like, hey, if anybody wanted to know 40 on Fridays is legit, look at this shit. And he turned it was just like a wall of 40. Yeah. He's like, this is fucking crazy. He goes, I didn't, didn't think he really did this. And you might need to come here and rip one one day on yeah. a Friday. Just drink a 40 be, here. I would be honored. Yeah. Man, no, well, you need it. to do it tomorrow. What's the, uh, what day is this it? This Friday. This Friday. We're here, right? We're here. You should come here on Friday. What you doing? Well, he's got a he's got a gig to do. Just bring a plan, forty we'll ounce. Out. How do you do we'll it live on the phone? What oh, we do? can do it after hours. Either. Yeah, we, yeah, no, we can get it done. We can do shit. Yeah. We can do it today. We can keep the footage. Yeah. Oh, okay. there it is. Yeah. Okay, okay. we get a forty right now. We get the 40 and we're here. We can sign cannabis talk one on one. Cannabis talk one on one. We'll hang it in the walls. Man. Why not? <laughs> Let's break real quick. We're gonna come back. It's Hazard Cannabis Talk One One. We're gonna come. Back. I still need the beatbox for you. Just hear you rip and flow, cause you know I still got a little something in my chamber. Let's get it. I might have a little something in me. It's Cannabis Talk One One. We'll be right back after. Keep it locked. Uh. We'll be right back with Cannabis Talk 101. Are you ready for the biggest concert of the year? It's the Burning Trees Festival, August 27th in Adelanto, California. Performing live on stage, it's the boss man himself, Rick Ross. One who live by the code, put this music to the side, get it in on the Ludacris. Ludacris. In my ear, talking a whole bunch of shit that I ain't trying Buster to. Buster Rhymes. Tell me what you really want to do. Come here, man. Talk to him, talk to Big Draco, a.k.a. Soldier Boy. Why me crack it, why me roll? Too short. Havoc from the infamous Mob D. X to the Z exhibit. And corrupt young Gotti. All live on stage August 27th at the Adelanto Plaza and Event Center. Plus, we have the World Series of Cannabis presented by CanX's iHeartRadio's Cannabis Talk 101, Game Day, Green Holdings Group, The Blacklist, and Weed Maps. For tickets, go to CanX's.com. Welcome back to Cannabis Talk 101. Are you ready for the biggest concert of the year? It's the Burning Trees Festival. Yeah, I already know. <laughs> August 27th, folks, in Adelanto, California, performing live on stage. It's the boss man himself, Rick, Rick Ross, Ross. Ludacris, Buster, Buster Rhymes. Rhymes, Big Draco, a.k.a. Soldier Boy, Too Short, Havoc from the infamous Mob Deep, X to the Z Exhibit, and corrupt young Gotti from the Dog Pound, all Man. live on stage August 27th at the Adelanto Plaza and Event Center. Plus, you know, we got that World Series of Cannabis presented by Canaxes, iHeartRadio's Cannabis Talk 101, Game Day, Green Holdies Group, Dues, The Blacklist, and Weed Maps. For tickets, go to canexus.com. That's C A N N E X S.com. And shout uh, out to Butter. Ice yes. fire, you know what I'm saying? All the you know, weed maps obviously. Um, you know, all the people that have been supporting us on this that are really coming through for us. Uh, you know, for me, I, I just wanna say that, you know, um it's it's such a blessing to have the whole industry behind us right now. Uh, you know how difficult it is. It, it, you know, it's been shout out to Keith Allen and the G four people for G4, pushing us too. Pop Brothers at Law, Pop Brothers, everybody um, helping us out, coming together. Yeah, everybody at iHeart that's doing so much. My guy Kid J at KGGI, Jennifer, for us. Jennifer doing so much over there. E uh, man at Power one hundred and six. Yeah, Preston, big boy coming on board right now. Uh, everybody, everybody. Romeo him. from the Goodfellas that's going to be on this a, event. Romeo's a good dude. I've met Romeo. Romeo's oh, Romeo cool. is my guy. Shout out to DJ was supposed to be DJ was here at my birthday party here too. So the Goodfellas, like what? I mean, yeah, Baker boys. What's up Baker boys. We got to invite them to the thing too. You know what I was thinking about. We need to tell Big Boy we should do a reunion since it's all these old school artists like that. We do Big Boy, me, Fuzzy, Liz, and yeah. fucking. Oh, that'd be hard. And you ready for this? Why it's a big deal? Because Big and E Man, we'll get them a private vehicle to well, pick listen, them all no, up. No, but, but Big and E Man, two different companies now, because E Man's now the program director the for Power 106, which, Power which is Marillo, and Big's, and Big's on, on Real 92.3, yeah, which yeah. is iHeart. So yeah. if we do a picture on stage together, it's of a reunited. You know what I'm saying? I want to make that happen. It's my epic. Point. Yeah. And you ready for this? I want you to take the picture. Because you're going to be on stage with me and my boys going, you guys, I want to reunite us. Get on stage. I'm going to call Liz. I'm going to call Fuzzy. I'm going to get everybody to put the fours up for you. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And you're know, you going to take the picture going, guys, us five of us on stage. Hell yeah, together. let's go. Okay? It's let's just go. a random I idea. I came up with, with you too, though. Yo, I like <laughs> that. Oh, no, hold on. We need that one too. 
I just thought I didn't think the four one. I just yeah, thought us being no, on stage sure. together in front yeah, of that crowd it. would be I, a good I, idea. I think it would be fantastic to and, present and, an artist and say, "Hey, I'm on stage, a reunited big boy," and and the current Benoit neighborhood as well. Yeah, uh, with big boy. Yeah, to yeah. Just you know, but to reunite other everybody from his neighborhood. And that would dope. be epic. And, you know what I mean? If he had a picture, pull that off. I'll even get Sean Wan and DJ Ray, the original fucking big boys neighborhood. Yeah. That would be so dope. Have us all up there. Let's go. Let's make that happen. That all being said, the staff too, thanking everybody. I appreciate each and every one of you as I just stared into Pitt's eyes. But Jan, Erica, Daniel, Cal, Christian, keep making those videos, dog. Both Christian A and Christian S. Work Denny, P. Funk, Connor, Gabrielle, Sager, Jessica, Cash, Cam, Kimberly, Isaiah, Salar, Nadia, Ali, Pitt, Devin, Chris Franquino, Jennifer, and Elvis, and of course, Mark and Jorge. Orale, pues. Jorge looked at himself. What about me, Jorge? Don't forget, Thanks, Jorge. Jorge. Gracias, Jorge. That's Thank our you. guy there. That all being said, it's, it's, it's a dream work that makes the teamwork. He Are says Jorge YA, baby. Jorge. Daniel. Hey, you know, I just want to say Jorge came up to me and he goes, he says, Who's Cameron? I said, Cameron. Daniel? Cam Cameron. Oh, Cameron. Because he says, Who's the shrimp? <laughs> why did I just say Christian? That's so fucked up. I thought he, he was talking Christian. shit about Christian. I was like, why is he talking smack about Christian? He See, said, Pitt, you said, did me wrong. Because he, he found a business card on, on the on the uh, on the table, and he who's said, Cameron? "Who's Cameron?" Because <laughs> Cam's name on his business. I see Cameron. that business card on the, so he says, on the it's floor. It's Cameron is shrimp in Spanish. Do me a favor. Next time you tell him that, <laughs> hey, tell him to pick up that card that he left on the floor because I'm the one who threw it away. I was going to put it on Cam's <laughs> desk, but I didn't throw it away. And the shrimp. Cameron. Oh, that's a hazard if I've ever heard one. <laughs> that all being said, we have hazard here in the building so, with so, us. I see how you did that. You a pro. Yeah, Look man. And watch this, man. So so Joe is, it was talking about beatboxing, and you were going to freestyle. Do you got one in you? You think you can just go around the room right. and just make it ready? Okay. So let me wet the lips a little bit. He said, let me just. As we get to talking and rapping and talk, I'm going to give you a little beat that I think would be. <clears throat> Something special. In Appropriate three, point. two, three, two, one. Yeah. Blood, blood, blood. Yo, it's hands into the mic. Who you know? We at Cannabis Talk Studios. Out in, out in the OC. Don't test me. He's from the IE, Mr. H A Z. E R D to the M I C. Look, here we here we go. Listen, one, two, three, look. My command of the English language is you wallowing in anguish to the bottle to the danger of me swallowing my anger because present day reality rap seven days without a beat. Begging you to battle me, you're never gonna rattle me. Never hesitating when instigating when second rating. Hey. <laughs> never hesitating when instigating when second rating. Opponents constantly hating whose memory I'm replacing with a name is facing. I don't care who the fuck I'm facing, just know that I will be placing them in a column of wins. And this problem begins as soon as I'm popping my pen. Look, you said go around the room. Keep, you can keep it going. You said, or, or he, he cut needs it. to breathe. He's 50. You Hold said, <laughs> exactly. He's 50. He needs to breathe real quick. Hey, that was dog. the longest beatbox <laughs> I went for a minute, dog. I can't even front. He needs to you breathe. Said, I you, know. Let him. Let, no, it's called do it a cappella. You said go around the room because the fellow's hurt. Shouts to the dude working the camera in the yellow shirt. Um, I'm looking at the screen. I see us three. It's has it to the MIC, a real MC. And shouts to the dude in the back with the glasses. I forget his name. I don't need my ass kicked. Wait, what's his name? No, Daniel. His, oh, Daniel son. We got the same government. I'm running this. Here we go. I'm loving this. This shit is all off the top. It's easy. I'm all off the WAP. I am zany um off the crany um. What's the gentleman's name to the left? Pit. 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 Pitt looks like he sells insurance over the phone. Um, has it to the microphone. Not he a... really does. <laughs> he really does look at the president selling insurance on the phone. That's so great. <laughs> not a not a dude to the right. He won't give me some hell, son. Because if you look at him, he looks like Maxwell's son. Yes. <laughs> that is a good one. No, for oh. real though, it's not even a far reach. He looks like he would fuck him a India re. Yeah. <laughs> not even a. That's not even a diss, dog. It ain't even a diss. She looks like she would be your type. Yo, this is has it to the microphone, and I ain't even got it right. I see the dude hunched down right below the computer monitor. Hold on one second. What am I calling up? Here we go. I'm sorry, dog. Hit you where it hurts, but he looks like a West Coast version of Joe Dirt. <laughs> 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 Everyone else is hiding. My bad. I don't mean to. My bad. I didn't mean to give you that suck attack. You could have got away with that beard, but you capped it off with the trucker hat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! I think there's a, 
Uh, uh, hold on one second. Yeah. He's let me. Let me. Go ahead. Go ahead, Christian. Give it to him. There he is. Oh no. I gotta give it to you though. I gotta give it to you. You stood up from in front of the TV screen. I don't mean to be mean. We in Orange County. Y'all got like Huntington Beach. He looks like a miniature version of Screech. <laughs> He really does. <laughs> but does. one know. second, one second, you know, that comparison was heaven sent because he looks like Screech if Screech was an immigrant. Oh! <laughs> Hazard. Yo, nothing but respect. These are just flows off of the chest. All right, I'm done. Oh, that was Damn. dope, man. Give it up for Give Hazard, it up for boy. Hazard, boy. That was fun. I mean, I came to play, have fun in the sun with you. I'm Big Joe, the last born son. This is my boo boy. Blue, I tried to keep going hard, but I so just So check it off. out, Go man. Ahead. I see Hazard on my left doing it real big. Joe Grande's on the mic just like the old kid. Still stretching it back. Got the homie Danny Mac, the homie Pitts to the side holding his hat back. And uh, I'm just kicking it, slow in the f slinky flow. Like Hazard on the mic, I'm going to keep it all on row. Now back it up, back it up, sing it one more time. Now Blue is on the mic. Now shut the fuck up, my... As he shuts the fuck up, <laughs> and as I go one back one time, oh, I like to give shit. a beat back and just give it one more time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And here we go. <laughs> hey, God that was it. fun, man. It's so good Thank to have you, Hazard. that, that Hazard, dope, that, that hip hop style, because oh, shit. that's what we come from, dog. Like Blue and I were talking about doing some like roll call type fun shit, but yeah, we about this to, is like we that vibe that, that like we. we you you doing that is is our vibe, dog. Yeah. We like. Oh, thank this. you, I appreciate it. And I don't even say I like. I say we're so in tune that I can say we like this. Yeah. Knowing Christopher Wright and Joseph Lopez, you fucking know, love this. You shit. know what I really want to do though, because because we we put you on the spot, man, and, and pressure it like that. Now I really want to hear. Just give us an acapella, man. Just something. Something that you just, got. That you know just what I mean. Eight, like ten that. bars, eight, sixteen bars, something. Just acapella. We'll all shut up and just let you flow. Um. I'm wait, wait, wait. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I just fucked you. Come on. fucked up. <laughs> All right, let's go. Come on. I'm from the side of town with tatted vipers a ride around. Six deep in a five-seater, hoping they ride was out. Grip heat to their forefingers, carry arthritis now, and mistreat karma until that bitch want to bite them foul. But quiet down, this isn't me glorifying how we live a lifestyle that's practically suicidal now. Because honestly, we ain't killing shit but our damn selves, putting each other in early graves of that damn cell. And it's a damn hell when you're doing that damn ill, waking up every morning knowing damn well that you ain't going home, no chance of parole. Have you ever had to glance at a man with no soul? I've seen it too many times when I was in the pen with it. You lose the will to live with consecutive life sentences. They missing their loved ones. They missing the loved ones, so tad them on appendages until they buy a gram of heroin for them to end the shit. Mm. I was with the killers behind barbed wire fences and wrote so many letters home, I perfected my penmanship. The other day, my coworker complimented it, said I had nice writing and asked me how'd I get the shit. I'm like, damn, homie, if you only knew, 24-hour lockdown, sitting in the shoe. <clears throat> yeah, anyways. Damn, that's man, hard. That's what's <laughs> up. That's hard. Hey. That's what's up. Seriously, though, that's thank you up. for doing what you've done for us. Yeah, If man. I can selflessly get a Canada Star one on one blue with Joe Grande ripping us up with, with, with something that we can play on the show more often, <laughs> yeah, I, I want to do it. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Because like, hey, that's it. what I know we can do for you. Feel yeah, me? Let's yeah. do it. And, and if, that, if you could just rip one and have some fun. But that it might be said, the intro song. Yeah, you, you know what I mean? Show. Exactly. We might, if it's, you rip something that's right. that, yeah, I got you guys. For that, that, that goes, like that rips the show, right? Yeah, let's do it. You know what I mean? I'll give you the elements of the show and yeah. we'll, we'll make something happen. That being said, oh, that just got me juicy right now. That just got me juicy. Another Southwest promotion. <laughs> oh, and I know what you're thinking and what I'm thinking. Now what we're going to have. Oh, now this is going to be great. Even All right, so here, here's my acapella. You ready? Uh -oh. Yeah, let's do it. All right, here we go. I'm going to do, which one should I do? I'll do Life is Real. So let me, let me put the mic okay, here. We go. I, got, I got him wanting to rap. This is dope. Uh -huh. I always take this as the ultimate compliment. So, yeah, you may like, make the old guys rap. It's fun. Yeah, let's go. <clears throat> Excuse me. Nice. Need some water? So yeah, yeah, no, I'm good. I'm good. <clears throat> let me get this out real quick. Yo, uh, this life is real, but it's something that you see every day. I'll break it down, I'll make it the cookie crumbles that way. Well, if I could, I would, but yo, I can't, so I try and hope me and my whole crew will make it through and survive. This life is real, but it's something that you see every day. I'll break it down, I'll make it the cookie crumbles that way. 
Well, if I could, I would, but yo, I can't, so I try and hope me and my whole crew will make it through and survive. I understand that this life that I live, it isn't perfect. So tell me what's the purpose, walking around here feeling worthless about myself and the crooked hand that I've been dealt, descriptions that were written of emotions that were felt. I, my life can't be explained, not even in poetic ways. So I'm locked up in a box and still trapped inside of a maze, caught in the days when the blunts blaze, bullets graze. I flip the page and see these gangsters in the war phase. People out the LA Times, when more cats die and more cats become convicted of more crime. Young, dumb, running the streets after dark scenes of dope fiends, the homeless pushing shopping carts, gangster street sidewalk and concrete. To me, it seems to be the only language I can speak. I'd rather live a life on my feet than live a life on my knees. Don't be amazed if I go out in a gun blaze. And life is real, but it's something that you see every day. I'll break it down or make it the cookie crumbles that way. Well, if I could, I would, but yo, I can't so try and hope me and my whole crew will make it through and survive. This life is real. And it ain't nothing changed from back in the day for you to still pull that out your back pocket. It's still cold lyrics. Uh, he practices that once a week when uh, he's drunk in front of the mirror. Oh, uh, well, no, uh, no, so he's always, no, so he's always not, ready to go. the mirror. It's right here uh, on this so, stage so here somewhere. It'll be uh, here so, or back so, in the back so alley. Just, just, to, just to prove you wrong, brainstorm my brain and torn. Gang bangs banging in the early morning. I've been going back and forth, mentally lost and burnt out, looking at my life and the way that it turned out, praying on these days, so I'm hoping for next days. Maybe I'm going to fall off losing the chess game, raised in a city with multiple opportunities. I chose to roll with the lowest of the community Hated by many but most envy the kid From outer space still on some millennium shit William H. Bonney I kill him and take money Well there's mother's motherfuckers who hate on me <laughs> uh, Oh I got him hyped hey, hey it's the headphones oh, yo, and the he mic on, I, got, I got another one <laughs> he, got his, he uses battle rap round Speaking three of battle, Are you gonna do any battle rap like with Hazard What's the other dude's name that we had here uh, Not Hazard but uh, uh, Disaster. disaster. Oh, that's the yeah, that, that's the Hummer. I've, I've met him on, 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 on a few occasions. On. Yeah, he's had a, disaster he's on, on here. He's a talent on the seat. When it comes to <laughs> battle rap, bro, that's a whole different. I'm like, a pop singer, bro. That is a whole different <laughs> realm. You know what I'm saying? And I came up battling, but like what those guys did, like him. If you're looking at like a Loaded Lux, a Murder Mook, right? Uh, uh, um, if you're looking at culture um, of the um, clips, you know what I'm saying? If you're looking at Hollow the Don, if you're looking at these dudes took it to a different place. Like they took battle rap and they turned it into like this fine tuned art form. You know what I mean? You have like, you know, they have fucking pay per view battle rap events that, that yeah. do numbers. Like they do, yeah, they yeah, do yeah. really they're, well. They're, they're, so yeah. they so were talking like, about doing one here. Huge, huge, huge shout out to those dudes. You know what I'm saying? Shout out to Diz. Um, and, and they kind of like, Resurrected their league. Oh, I forget what the hell they're calling it. Uh, but him and um, what was the league called? Him and Lush. What? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 So, so Thank you, with that, like, you know, you really got to give it to those dudes. Like, they're they're very, very talented at what they do. And not only like from a like writing rhymes perspective, but like having a brand and pushing that. You yeah, know what I mean, it's not just the rhymes because like, yeah, Diz will wrap circles around you know a lot of these dudes. But like, it's the the way that they kind of like try to put battles together that's going to have a dope storyline. Like, they're really doing their shit right now. Yeah. It's, it's really they're dope creating, They're producing as well. Yeah, like, you know what I mean? They're it's producing really a, an element of, like, like Mexico versus the U.S. Like, they're making something. Yeah, yeah. I, I always like to look at that and call it production, right? Like, when you we produce or do anything, go, go ahead and grab his empty bottle there, Daniel, too, please. It's always one of those things that you look at when people take it the extra mile because they're caring that much about the culture. Like, Nobody else is doing that or ever yeah. did that or laid that out. Like, they're laying this out literally right now for the culture. They're fucking laying this foundation. Well, you, yeah. have, to, you have to remember, like, these guys come from, you know, and, and, and I remember, you know, there was, um, I'm trying to think of the name, but like Medusa, um, you know, we, we used to be at. You're talking uh, about the blow? Yeah, Project Blow. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I used to be down at Project Blow all the time when I was, because I don't know, you don't know this, but uh, I was at Death Row in the 90s. So, you know, I was one of the only Latin artists there. Oh, that's dope. And, and so I was rapping back then, and so I used to go down to Project Blow, and then, you know, I wasn't ever... You were with Death Row? <laughs> <laughs> you stupid. <laughs> that's so great. <laughs> no, I just walked on stage. You know? Hey, <laughs> hey you, know the, you know the homie, uh, a Big Lyric? Yeah. He was, was, yeah, you know Lyric? Mexican Cat? Yeah. Yeah, he was, he was a runner. Yeah. Yeah, so, Lyric was, he was 187. Yeah, so, so he... Uh, I ain't he, seen Lyric in years, though, bro. Yeah, I'd he love just to moved. He just moved. You know him? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'd love that's to see the homie. Lyric. Yeah, yeah, I know Lyric. I know Lyric from Death Row. I haven't seen him for fucking years, but I got a great story with Lyric, man. Um, you know, I, Ice Cube was uh, pr producing the song West Side Connect Gang, Connect Gang, Bing Bing Bang. West Side in the studio when, when Lyric was, Lyric went to go get us uh, uh, Taco, Taco Bell. Bell. Taco Bell. That's the Taco and, That's with him? Oh, yeah, it was Lyric. That oh, brought, no so Lyric way. brought, I was just talking this, this story. Tell, I just yeah, told yeah. the story, yes. bro. Okay. He'll remember this story, too. Is uh, so so I'm sitting in the studio while they're recording the song. Ice Cube's recording the song, and lyric brings in a bunch of Taco Bell, okay. right? And then um, 
fucking, I just, you know, I'm, I just reach in the bag and grab some tacos, you know what I mean? And I just start eating. Well, the first two tacos on the top were uh, chicken soft tacos. Mm -hmm. So I eat the chicken soft tacos and I'm just munching. I'm starving, you know? And then all of a sudden I'm fucking mouth full of fucking food. And, and Ice Cube was like, whoa, pour, pours all the tacos out, digs through the whole shit and goes, where's my chicken tacos? Oh, <laughs> so fuck. fucking lyric, lyric. I mean, so, so Q, uh, Cube was like, yo, you need my fucking tacos, great. bro? Yo. Two fucking tacos, bro. Two. I sent you to buy all these things and just give me two chicken tacos. Two fucking chicken tacos. The only yeah. thing he Who's ordered, bro, asshole? I got him fucking a full mouth, just full of, full of tacos, dude. What? And he's looking at me and he's like, and I'm like, uh, like I'm sorry Like you know what I mean And back then bro bing, bing, I, I wasn't even driving dog I was so young I, I was getting <laughs> dropped off At the studio every day Like I had literally People drop me off At the studio And then I'd get a ride home From somebody at the studio Every night I um, mean I was probably 16 But you know I'm at Death Row And Ice Cube's like Yo you eat my fucking tacos And I'm like Oh shit bro And I literally just finished The second one And full of my mouth so he goes out and tells Lyric, and Lyric's like, yo, I'll go get you some new one. He's like, fuck that, and he got all pissed off. And shit. <laughs> that was my first. And then I seen Cube later, though, at, at a, uh, Butch Cassidy's video. Um, this is the way us hustlers roll. Uh -huh. Sit back and watch about it. Okay, okay, okay. And I was in that video with him, and then Cube came up next to me, and, and he just started dancing. And that was kind of like the break the ice where, where we were like, right. he wasn't mad at me no more. Ah, you can't I be even, too mad I, over tacos. Yeah, well, because they were watching it, because Ice Cube back then had a, uh, an Impala. It was like a 93 or 95 Impala, the, the dope ones, you know what I mean, that came out. And, Oh, and yeah, yeah. I was like, bro, they were washing this car outside. I was like, I'll go help wash your car, bro. Like, I was trying to be like, I was like, Dope. Hey, I'll still go wash the fucking <laughs> you car. Yeah, you should have ran down the street and got us some fucking tacos. Yeah, man. well, I, I didn't have a whip. Yeah, no, and Taco Bell wasn't that close, bro. It was in the Cedar. I don't know where the fuck we were out there, man. But yeah, shout out to Lyric, man. I, I ain't seen him in years, bro. And, and he had a, a dope band for a while, 187, I heard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he was doing his thing. He like he did a lot of touring like in Europe. It was like kind of that like rap metal yeah. shit. And, but like, I've seen like some like clips and, and mostly photos from that time, like he had a crazy live show. Like yeah. that fool had a crazy live show. He he moved over into um like uh show promoting. Yeah. And then um like now his his passion is like uh uh, uh music videos, photography, he does a lot yeah. of that type He of was shit. out the door every day, bro. He he just he just he was uh, at Death Row every day. He, he just he's... moved to Tennessee. Yeah, that dude was at the yeah. at Death Row every day, man. I, I used to literally walk, what's up, Larry? Every day he'd check us in, check us out. You know what I mean? He, I remember he went viral. He went he went viral like Maybe a few years back, because that that picture somebody had photoshopped the game's face on that picture next to Tupac. Uh -huh. It was a picture of him. It was a picture of lyric. Oh, really? Yeah, that pic. You know, you know what you want to talk about? Nah, I haven't seen so it. So there was it went they went crazy on the blogs maybe like eight nine years ago. Somebody had taken uh, the rapper, the game's like teenage photo, and like took the face and superimposed it on it. Uh, lyric has a picture with Pac in a studio from the night that he recorded hit him up yeah he was like yo Pac, you just like recorded a classic i already know can i get a picture with you so they took a polaroid picture yeah and then i guess somebody uploaded it online and lyric had it he would post it every once in a while like on a throwback whatever and so somebody had taken that picture and like photoshopped it and then the game had posted it yeah to his page to his instagram and people were like, <coughs> people, you know, you know how the internet does, you know what I'm saying? They're full of shit. You're a liar. And they're, they're tagging Lyric. Like, Lyric got tagged like 10,000 times in the comments. Like, yeah. this is, you know, big Lyric's picture, blah, blah. Yeah, That's yeah. Great. That you know game's mean? like, of course it is. Well, Fuck. I'm it's not crazy. Well, but yeah, but he said, he, well, they, they, to, to, in, his, in defense of him, he's like, yo, a fan sent me this. I thought it was a dope ass. I was like, how yeah. the hell did you make it look so cool? You know what I mean? Yeah. And yeah. he's like, I just thought it was dope, so I posted it. You know, Man. Of course, the case he's was, just paying but... homage and showing it. Somebody would respect that. That's that's so we're, yeah. getting, we're here with Hazard right now. We're yeah, going to yeah, do yeah. the high five with all the guests that come on the show. And once again, Doug, thank you for that sick-ass yeah, promo you, and everything you that dope. you're doing. Yeah, very dope, dope, everything you do with us. Check yeah, out Hazard, man. I am Hazard. I, it's I'm a Hazard. I'm a Hazard. Yeah, so, so the letter I, the letter M, the letter A, H-A-Z-E-R-D. Yeah, so I'm a Hazard. All right, question number one. Yep. How old were you the first time you smoked cannabis, and where'd you get it from? I was like, fuck. I was like 12. So where'd you get it? Where'd you get it from? Uh, one of the homies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's keep it short, huh? Mm -hmm. I like that. There attitude. it is. There it is. Question number two of the high five. What is your favorite way to use or smoke cannabis? I'm an edible dude myself. I, really? I like, yeah, I like, I like the gun. I've actually brought you guys a pack. I mean, you guys, I know you probably got a lot, but I brought you a pack of my boy stuff. It's nice. funny because I've been how how what's the dosage on them? Uh, so the packs the packs four hundred is twenty. It's their gummy bears. There's twenty gummy uh, or little gummy squares. Yeah. So there's twenty uh, twenty gummy. Shouts out my boy uh, Tommy Tomato, uh, SoCal Gardens. Yeah. He um he, he they're fire though. I like them because they're really accurate. 
Like, right. you know how sometimes, like, you'll eat something, you'll be like, I what didn't do nothing. Or, 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 or what the fuck was that? Or uh, yeah, that wasn't enough? that wasn't enough. And then, like, the next day, oh, I'll, I'll take one. It didn't do nothing to me. And then other, you're fucking on and the couch then, for yeah, three hours. Yes. Like, one of them hit you. are pretty steady. They, they, they got a real delayed reaction, though. That shit sometimes take me, like, 40, 45 minutes before it hits. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, but when hour. it does, though. It hits you. Oh, yeah. It's nice. That's funny because I've one. gotten like 5, nice. 10 milligrams. It puts me on the couch. You know what I mean? Because when I just do the little ones, I just oh, yeah. microdose a little bit. At 5, 10, I'm like. <sighs> Cut the gummy in half. Cut yeah, it's all I need is a little <laughs> bit. <dark laughs> at night. And I always do that <laughs> like at night. Like, oh, God. If not just a little bit during the day. Question number three, three of the high five. Craziest place you ever used cannabis or smoked? Prison. Ooh. I, get pri- I, I would think, right? Prison? Yeah, Fuck. that's pretty crazy. I, um, yeah. We used to um, we used to actually... Shouts out my boy from Jesus Smokes, man. We used to take the back pages of the Bible. Yeah, I already did. The do. blank ones, you cut them out, roll J's with it, because it was perfect. They're, they're, they're excellent papers. Yeah, I did it too. You I, know I, what I'm in the county, yeah. So, yeah, you, you sit there, you know, take the back pages. I was, a, I was a fucking gentleman about it. I took the back pages. I knew a dude who was like a devil worshiper type fool, and this fool would take the page with John 3.16 in it. And wow. like. <laughs> Wow. Burn it down. Like, you're wild. I used yeah. to tell her for, like, you're wild. Like, you, Isn't you, it crazy to think, like, that paper, that page is worse than the back page? You know what I'm saying? I'm just yeah, like, I can feel the same way, though, in my head, too. Like, you know what I'm saying? I was like, hey, hold you're on, hold doing on. It. Don't blatantly do it. Right. Yeah. Let me take Let's this. just try to grab the, at least these ones. Let's take the five, six pages out the back. That's all I'm saying. Let's be gentlemen about it. But I say prison, though. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, that's, that's a good crazy. One. That's yeah. crazy. Question number four of the high five What is your go to munchie after you get high? So it's I, so if I don't have nothing planned, I'm gonna alternate between like sweet and salty foods. So I'll have like a fucking some like chocolate popcorn, some sour gummies or whatever, oh, yeah. and then I'll turn around and I'll eat like some fucking hot chips or something, right? Yeah. Um, but like if I got the energy for it, I'll sit there and I'll make a whole ass prison spread. <laughs> what and you like, putting in your spread? I, Come on, let's get on the shit, spread. I got some, about it. I got so, a little uh, sardine on the spread. <laughs> so I'm gonna so I'm take. We, we, we'll, we'll do the simple one. Um, so I just take the I take the soup. I, I still cook it in the bag. In the bag, my lady. The... My lady be getting mad at me too. She's like, "You really fucking gonna eat that? <laughs> shit? Why are you put it in a fucking bag? Put a bowl." No, I, I just open a soup bag and I, I put the hot right. water in there. Right, yeah. let it sit like in a bowl in case it tips over. And once let that sit, um, and I'll grab whatever whatever crunchy shit we got in the house. She laughs at me because like I I need like that crunchy, crunchy. texture with everything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I think it's a Mexican thing, so, but yeah, I'm not like crunchy too. So I, I everything has to be fucking have a crunch to it. So I either 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 like some some pork cracklings, some chicharrones, yes, yeah. or or some hot chips. You know, oh, we're waistline connected. I think that the waist, I think the most connected. the most underrated. I love it because my kids don't like them for some reason, but we'll get the um. The the flaming hot variety pack. Mm-hmm. They'll fuck up the funyuns. They'll fuck up the lime chili ones. The, the extra hot ones. That, but they leave the flaming hot Fritos. Super oh, underrated that's perfect for chip. You. Yeah, it's a perfect Super one to put on those. Chip, right? yeah, yeah, it's perfect for the top of the spread. So either the flaming hot Fritos or chicharrones, some beans, and then whatever protein. Beans. In the How fridge. do you do the beans on that? Like refried beans. So just the canned ones, and you just put them on there. No, my lady don't do canned. She makes okay. shit. Okay, so you get so, those, yeah, your, the good the homemade shit. beans. Yeah, okay, good. I had to be clear on that because I do my homemade homemade beans too. So then, so then, you know, beans from the fridge, and then whatever protein. Proteins in the fridge, so if there was like some chicken left over, left over, whatever, and she'll get mad at me. She'll be like, "You're gonna take my like good cooking and fuck it up in the spread." Oh no, the spread. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? What's the sauce? Okay, like, that. What kind of sauce you put on Speaking it? Speaking of your lady, it's your so, wife here. What's her name, man? Yeah, no, don't, don't, she, she said don't. No. <laughs> oh yeah, she said I don't want no part <laughs> yeah. of that. Well, she she's no part beautiful. Of that. Yeah. Yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate yeah. it. That'll um, be said. What we, so, protein, and then there's a sauce that you put in it. Maybe uh, the main definitely, name, what, definitely what do do? Sir, sriracha hot sauce. Um, if we need to make it stick, because a lot of people like the mayo, I can't, I don't, I'll do our mustard. Okay. Mustard instead of mayonnaise, and then um, sriracha hot sauce on the top. Um, oh, chop up some pickles. There we go. Nice. Chop some pickles. Those are going on top with the sriracha hot sauce. Throw that bitch in a tortilla or like some torta bread, you know what I'm saying? And go. And go. Like, so yeah, I, I'll sit there like for a whole, like a whole that's 30. That's a munchie. High as shit though. And I'll Dude, be My mouth right now is like, watering. Like, you like making it, you sitting there like, me and my brothers right. used to love, well, then we, <laughs> they first taught me our spread because they went to jail first. And then yeah. my oldest brother came out teaching us what spread was. And when I went to jail, I remember making my own container out of the foam cups. That was my heater, con- like the uh, warmer thing. You yeah. know? And I got it from an OG that was before me. Hey, Joe, I'm going to give you this. Yeah. Cool. He got outside my thermos. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Then I make my spread and keep the warmness in. Yep. That was the best part of that, man. It was like, oh. It's like a whole process. We, all, we always say, shout out to my boy, um, my boy Big Tiny. He's from uh, Spreads. They actually, there's actually like a company now. 
They're making they're spreads. Called, they're called spreads. It's really dope. I'll, I'll give you guys their plug. You would love. Yeah, he's actually an Orange County cat. Well, so, I um, eat just so healthy now. I'm such like oh, really, man. really good dude. And they actually have these prepackaged spread. Oh, that's pouches. the cat that uh, the workout, the big dude. Yeah. Oh yeah, he's on. Uh, uh, he, he's all over Instagram. No, no, no. I think I know who you're talking about. Oh yeah. Not no, no, not him. So, uh, Tiny's a big dude himself. Yeah. But um, um, they, these dudes are like really doing their thing. Um. They, it's called spreads. You know what I mean? You can look them up. Um, and it's a it's a prepackaged soup with some hot chips. Where you just just add water. The spread ready to go. Ready to go. Oh, yeah. Dope. In one little pouch. You sell them for like I think I, they, I was just at a festival with them on Sunday, um, and they were selling them for like five bucks a bag. Nice. Either how high are we or how fat are we that we stayed that long on question number four with the munchies? Man, I'm Yo, so man. <laughs> one of the other connected. One of the Waste other. Bing, bing, bang. Connected. Question number five with a high five with my man Hazard, yep. Daniel Sanchez, yep, yep. aka the man, the myth, the legend. If you could smoke He's cannabis with anyone, today. dead or alive, who Ooh, could it be and why? Man. You know what? Like, I, I guess, I guess the the everybody's like bucket list has got to either no be like, yours. Don't go. Look I know, I know, I know, I know. I gotta say, like, a huge honorable mention. Uh, either either be real or 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 Snoop. Obviously, those are like obvious ones. But I would actually say this, and and this is um. I don't even know if those are obvious. Maybe for you, they're obvious. To me, yeah, I mean, exactly. to me, they. I mean, kind of you know, you, oh, yeah. in hip hop. Yes, you know, for sure. Well, it could be anybody. It could like, be you know. But what I would say, honestly, in all seriousness, I would say this: um, rest in peace to my grandmother. So, my grandmother, when she was young, would like, I, get, I found out like way later, she would smoke weed. Like when she was young, young, uh, like she's in her twenties, and I wasn't born yet, right? So uh, she got older, and she actually had um, uh, got diagnosed with ALS. Mm. So as as you know, as a an older lady, I would bring her. I was bringing her like. Uh, some like uh, shout out to my boy XP uh, Salamander OG. He would sit there and make me this. Um, his lady would actually make it for him. She would take like an ounce and a half of their flour, and then she would put it in um, coconut oil. Mm-hmm. So it was like a like a, like like can of butter. Yeah. But it was but it was it was plant based, right? Yeah. It was coconut oil. So she would send me like it looked like a giant candle, and it was green. Yeah. And I'd give it to my grand because my grandmother at the end like she couldn't. Um, what well, ALS does is, like it affects like a certain group of muscles usually and whatever hers it was like her tongue and her cheek so mm. she couldn't like eat so like i would take the um you know i would take the the can of cocoa but i like she like put it in her mouth like on her gums you know what i'm saying yeah she's in a lot of pain towards the end so like i would say i would i would you know i would have like one one last combo with her for sure nice man. You know i'm sorry for your loss yeah. no yeah yeah, that, yeah that's, that's for sure that's, man. A, yeah, that's a loved one man. that's that's a beautiful thing man did yeah. uh, how did she use that oint? how would she use that <coughs> so, cocoa butter uh, you could like they had told me like it was like it was a fucking superman thing that they did for me because it was topical she could ingest it she could put it like cook with it the whole night yeah bit, right she, yeah. she was able to cook imagine. with it yeah. she was able to cook rub with it on it. your she body could, the whole night fucking everything i would imagine and and it was really cool because since it wasn't there was no animal byproducts in it um, Flour, oil, it, it didn't. It didn't matter if she could leave it on the counter, put it in the fridge. It was gonna, you know, harden. Yeah. Because you can still grab it when it's hardened. Apply it Ex- on your body. Exactly. So, she'd had it in the fridge, and I told her you don't have to refrigerate it because she was having a, a hard time getting. She's like, "Well, do I microwave it? What do I do?" I was like, "Just leave it on the counter." Yeah. So at room temperature, it was kind of like, like if you were like to leave cream, butter like yeah. in a, in a yeah, butter dish, like nice butter. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So like yeah, she was able to use it as a topical ointment. That's why that's my guy XP man. XP yeah, the marksman. People that did that. Yo, he, man. Yeah, he he's that's... forever good in my book. That that man. And he didn't try. I tried to give him money. He wouldn't take it. Yeah. He was man. giving me. She, they were making her like edible cookies. And at first she was eating those, but then it got to the point where she couldn't chew. Yeah. So they like they sat there and like game planned it. You know what I mean? They took a whole bunch of their tree and they just cooked down that that coconut. Are they a company? A licensed company now? Um, no. Nah, he's got. Yeah, he has a private label. It's called a, a Salamander OG. Um, let, let him know that because of something like that, I would love to, if he's a licensed company, we'd love to have him on the show to promote his type of company, yeah, the type of things that they do. Because th- things, stories like that, that yeah. we hear of countless so companies important. out there that yeah, do this, so right? Important. There's yeah. so many companies out there that do this. And when we find out about them, we want to highlight them on the show. So if yeah. you can let the CEO know, uh, yeah. then we would love to feature him I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll come back with him. Like, that's my Done. boy, boy, for real. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'll tell guy. you what, do one thing I, I want to mention. It's super important is that. When people that that's what the cannabis community is about. That's like that's why real. he didn't take your money, bro. Exactly. And, and I, 
like you know and even if he did sometimes they have to because they they, they need business to you know business. what i'm saying it ain't it, right. and, and not only business but sometimes they just can't afford to do it's just overhead right yeah, yeah you know and that's what i was telling him. i'm like bro don't take anything more than just what do you need for me to just cover what, what but, covers his cost what covers the, you know what i'm saying case, cover the cost and he told and he told me he's like nah i, I got it i got it yeah that's like, dope you know what i'm saying well, so that dude him. like that and he's a talented uh, artist in his own right he's doing his thing right now he just dropped a project called um uh, Pacific Standard Time. So shout out to my boy XP, XP the Marksman. Pacific Standard Time. Go check that out on all streaming platforms. He's a super dope artist, but he's a better person. Nice, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, that dude. Nice. That dude's got my respect and appreciation, admiration. To, you know, to the day I die. You that's know what I'm dope. Man. Really, really dope dude. Anything you know that we forgot? Yeah, man. That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. Is there, any, that is there anything that we forgot before we let you get on out of here, man? That you need to say? Uh, follow me on you know on, on the socials TikTok, Instagram at Ima Hazard the letter I the letter M the letter A H A Z E R D. Catch me at Bernie Trees on the twenty seventh. Yeah, you know what I'm saying we're gonna we're gonna do some real cool shit, man. I'm I'm really um looking forward to that. You know you know shouts out to you guys and everybody a part of that whole festival. Um and, and again thank you guys for having me. I appreciate you guys. No doubt, man. Thank you very much, man. It's Cannabis Talk One Hundred and One. And remember this: if no one else loves you, we, we do. do. Thank you for listening to Cannabis Talk One Hundred and One on the iHeartRadio app. Apple Podcasts, or wherever you get your podcasts.